Hello, welcome to Tub Talks with Damon. And my very, very special guest is my friend and mentor, Fausto Fernos. Um, Fausto is the creator and producer of my favorite podcast, Feast of Fun, which has been continuous now for 16 years. That's right. And we are here celebrating your nearly 3,000th episode <laughs> of Feast of Fun. How are Hi, you? I'm doing good. I feel like Angela Lansbury, if you Google it, her uh, bathtub on YouTube, you can it see her, pamper, her vanity video. I that never she saw that until you showed that to me. <laughs> Do you know that her brother, uh, Brad Lansbury, produced Murder, She Wrote, and The New Adventures of Wonder Woman. Yeah, we keep it in the family. And Wild Wild West, and a bunch of other TV wow. shows that we love. Wow, that is incredible. Yes. So this man is a source of information and guidance and wisdom, and I have been loving you and respecting you my entire career. Thank you. I'm so honored to have oh, you in, in the tub for Time Talks. I know. It's like, um, it's like is... only fans, but without... <laughs> hey, watch it. This is a family show. Keep the hands where I can see them. Well, this has kind of been a dream of mine to do a series like this, yes. to talk with people I admire, um, but to be able to facilitate these conversations naked in a bathtub. So I am so naked. Grateful. Look at me. I am naked. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you agree. This is like that. a La Pequena Hillary Hulk. <laughs> so I yes. want to ask you something I'm asking all my yes. guests. Tell me what you like most about your body. Oh. Touch the skin, honey. Yeah, it's Touch the skin, oh, honey. It's so you cannot have this skin because you are what an overgrown orangutan. And, and training. I don't think I have enough hair. To I got my anything. teeth. I got my eyes. I got my nose. I got my blood. So we are celebrating. I got my muscles. We are out in Chicago and we are celebrating. So we're gonna have some. Champagne oh my God! Where did that champagne come from? Where I Does prepared. every guest get some booze? No, you're special. Oh my god, and this I'm towel is not staying I'm on my I'm specially head. prepared for you. This is so nice and of you. And you can take that any way you want to, but you are, oh, I are prepared, prepared for you. Prepared. I don't know where to put this. Darling, be um, careful with that cork. It's going to pop somebody's eye out. You're going to poke an eye out with that thing. This is holy water, honey. I don't know. Well, I'm talking about the bathtub. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. That really was... Oh my god. I don't play with champagne, baby. <laughs> We're doing this. Yes, honey. So you didn't answer my question, though. So for a man who has been interviewing yes. people nonstop for 16 <laughs> years, you evade questions very well. What is the part of your body you like the most? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. This, for me, this is holy water. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I like nice tits. How about you? Do you like your tits? I do like my tits. You're beautiful. And, and, you have been and people really like hard. my tits. Yeah, and you have also been doing a lot of very healthy uh, bodybuilding recently. That you have been well, you've been helping people understand. So, how to so, do that. so part of it is like you know my journey into fitness comes from being you know a gay teenage boy. I'm gonna put this up here because okay. my wig is just don't falling off. Burn it because it's gonna be fine. Candles going on here. This champagne is burnt, Damon. <laughs> 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 this champagne is burnt. <sighs> I hope your caviar is as good as better than your champagne. Oh, no, so yeah. so part of it, seriously speaking, um, you know, I've had a lot of physical health issues. I have my father's body. Yeah. My father died in two thousand six, and and um, it, one of the greatest sadness in my life is that my father never saw me to grow up to sound to look, mm. to uh, hit, see my personality kind of uh, evolve and develop. And so, you know, and the good things and the bad things of my father uh, live in me. And one of them is my back problems. Mm. And so because I have um, chronic back uh, pain, I have to do a lot of therapy. And, and bodybuilding actually helps me um, overcome a lot of that stuff. Wow. But it is like if I don't do the exercises, then what I call the demon comes back. And it, it is horrible. And it's like, it's something where, you know, you're having to manage and maintain a lot of pain and you're, you can't move, you're in bed and you know, bathtubs like this actually help a lot. They do. They do and you do so much for the community. I don't think people often realize that you're often struggling mm -hmm. against physical pain to yeah. be present. I know. I, well, I think I, if my doctor said to me, if I don't take my back pain seriously, I will wind up in a wheelchair oh in a decade. God. It's like Frida Kahlo. It's like Frida Kahlo, yeah. Yeah. 
So this is not something that's like unique to me. It's something genetic that uh, I'm just gonna take this off. Take it like, off. Just use your hair. Oh well, my hair is not like hair. makeup. Makeup. <laughs> Can we please get some makeup? Oh my god. They can't it's see so... me like this. Look at me. I am you. naked. Well, usually people hear you. Yeah, they see me. And like, for 16 years, more than Do you want to get my foot of, a massage? Sure. I'm oh. about to. Hundreds of yeah. thousands of people yeah. around the globe have been listening to you <laughs> for the last 16 years. <laughs> Is that I not love, true? I have to say, uh, Damon, I love the ridiculousness of this setup. Thank and, you. Uh, and I it's very hard to concentrate. <laughs> well, this is you know, so for someone yeah. who I consider a global expert in doing interviews with people from all over the world. So that's the one quite thing, a compliment. So part of the thing, I, I yeah. like to be ridiculous. And, and I like to be part silly. of the problem yeah. with with doing interviews sometimes is when there's so many things to distract a person. <laughs> And there's a yeah, lot distracting me. I mean, there's cat. Look at these candles. Don't burn yourself. Honey, do look at this. Do not burn yourself. It's fire. Do not burn the fire. There's you got incense whining candles. <laughs> it's such a freaky scene. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so let's yes. talk about let's how, how Feast of Fun, how the podcast began. Feast why, of Fun. Why did you and how did you start a podcast back at a time when no one even knew what a podcast was? Well, we started the podcast. It was a project that we were started in 2004. And we, you say we, me you're... and my husband, yes. and, and the people that at the time we were creating a, a live variety show. Okay. And I was sick of producing and that. This was show. here in Chicago. Here in Chicago. Yeah. Okay. And we are here at the City Suites in Lakeview. Mm hmm. In Boys Town, North, North Halstead. And is this where the show yes. started, or what neighborhood did you start the show? We were doing it mostly in um, band venues and the Vietnamese community, okay. like restaurants and stuff like that. And so we did this uh, musical variety show with drag queens, and, and I would interview the drag queens and the performers in the show. Wow. So they would perform, and then I'd get them back on stage, kind of like a, kind of like a forerunner to American Idol, you know, people yeah. would perform. And then we'd be there and they're like, so how do you think you did? You know, and they're like, what? And it was uh, very ridiculous and wild. It was very exciting at the time. But at the same time, I, came, I used to do a cable access show in the early 90s. And I said, you know, why don't we just do like an internet blog? I wanted to do like cable access again. And I had heard that people were recording audio. And there's a guy who actually had helped me um, record audio clips from the live shows. And I said, well, why don't we start putting these up on a blog to get people to come see the shows? Wow. And so that got my wheels turning. And I said, you know, we can just do an online radio show to get people interested and to come see the shows. And that's what became one of the world's first podcasts. So most yes. things that called themselves podcasts at the time were people reading their blogs. So it was audio blogs. And so it was, you know, dear people, today I went to the grocery store and there was a woman in the counter and she was taking too long, too long. She had brought 21 items and the 20 items were less line and I was very nervous. It's like Julia and Julia. Yeah. <laughs> There's just... And you know, that movie really is right, actually yeah. better when you remove the blogger out mm -hmm. of it and mm -hmm. just put Julia Child. Far better. And my life right. actually is very similar to Julia Child and her husband, Stanley Tucci. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you both have very hot husbands. We'll give you that. Well, it, it's just that my husband and I were always creating things together. Yes. We're always writing. We're always doing uh, shows and jokes. Yes. And so I, I'm very lucky to be married to an amazing man. Yes. And um, our our day-to-day -day life is we're talking about food, we're talking about guests, and just like Julia Child and her husband. So the, and they film that show in their home just like we do. Right, so the creation yeah. of Feast of Fun mm -hmm. was in coalition with your husband, with your partner, with your best friend. Well, my I husband think... was kind of reluctant to do it, but he has a beautiful voice. And I have, you know, Lenny from The Simpsons. Hey, it's me, Fausto! <laughs> and um, so I think with that situation, it was about... Um, creating a space where Mark's talents could shine. Yeah. And Mark is not a person who doesn't have theatrical training. He, he has friends uh, who are theater artists and stuff, but he himself hasn't had that. And so, you know, I think the podcast was really a great tool for allowing him to unlock his creativity. And Mark, you know, in the last 16 years, has written a lot of amazing material for the show. And in fact, a lot of the intros are mostly written by Mark. And what are yeah. what are 
what are the pitfalls or downsides of creating and working and living with your emotional partner and your business partner? Well, uh, when you uh, are married to your coworker, you uh, need to have an HR person that is someone else. You need your strength. You need a therapist. Yes. And you know, like companies have HR, they have people to mediate conflicts. Yeah. And I think one really great thing for me is, is Mark and I have gone in, into therapy mm -hmm. in the last couple of years, and that's been really good at just sort of like um, understanding and communicating better. What did you learn from that? Um, you know, one thing that I've always believed, and it's reinforced uh, my thought that that communication is the most important thing mm -hmm. to a healthy or any relationship, Beautiful. whether it's friendship, husbands, wives, non-binary spouses, your coworkers, your manager, it's about communicating with them. Because people, you know, it, it, you can, and, and when you're communicating with somebody, it's really important to talk about your feelings mm -hmm. and your viewpoints mm -hmm. and, um, and, a, and assume positive intent for the other mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. so I, call that, I call that the pappy rule. The pappy. Persistently assume positive intent. Hey, keep those hands where I can see It's the puppy. <laughs> it's the puppy. Positively, All right. persistently assume positive intent. Yeah, and, and so I think, you know, part of it is like I, I get, Mark and I have sort of been roped into by our audience to being um, um, relationship or sex or advice columnists. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, this is why I tell everybody the answer to all of life's secrets. You already know all the answers. And I'm giving you permission now. But what about people who don't know or don't you think do they know? know the, you do know the answer to your problem. You just have to find it. And, and you have to fun. give yourself permission to do it. Well, I would say that your, your yeah. show has been a consistent way for people to unlock that wisdom that may yeah. already be inside of them. To, to see these speakers and guests and political leaders right. and authors um, and entertainers through the years. Um, to unlock that wisdom. I know I always learned so much from your show. You. and And... The respect I have for the fact that you provide a service that I think is more needed really? now than 16 years ago, which is the simple art of conversation. The ability for human beings to talk, to listen, to care, to empathize, even if they don't agree, even if they don't see things the same way. But to say, you have a point of view, we have a point of view, sometimes we have the same point of view, sometimes we don't. Now, you yeah. have taken a fair amount of crap. Yeah. For there's there's websites trying to cancel me. Well, you, for 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 being a, a nuanced Such rational. Such fun sucks. Well, for being yeah. empathic and fair, sometimes to different sides yeah. of an argument or something that's emerging in our cultural lexicon, you always give fair, I think, airtime to let right. people talk about things and hear about things. But you've taken a lot of shit for that. Well, and you know, and part of that is uh, a lot of it is com coming from. Uh, People hurt people, hurt people. Yes. But uh, it's uh, the girls from RuPaul's Drag Race and that show specifically. Um, you know, I've never tried to surprise someone with questions. Mm -hmm. um, I usually have a, a pretty long conversation with the guests before we even tape the show. And um, we ask them, like, what's, what are some things we don't know about you? This is like, you know, reality TV shows ask the same question. Right. Um, because we want to sort of unlock, we want to get you to think. And, and so uh, I asked uh, Kim Chi, what are some unusual things about you that people don't know? And she's like, well, I, at my age, I'm a virgin. I, remember, yeah. I have not had sex with anybody. Yeah. And I hang out in the clubs, I'm wild on stage, and I'm like, you know, somebody who is known for being this outrageous person, but in my everyday life, I'm actually very... Uh, calm, very serene, yeah. and I've never had sex with another person. She was like 26 at the time. Right? Yeah. yeah, and so we interviewed her about that, and boy, did I get into trouble. Still to this day. people, they did the opposite asking that of question, assuming you're a virgin. The I said, you're a virgin. They, yeah, they assume negative. What is, that, what is it like for you to be a virgin in this time in your life? Yeah. And this is before she got on Drag Race, so that was an interesting thing. And, you know, a lot of controversy that we've had stem from the guest saying, let's ask to talk about this outrageous topic. Yeah. And then we asked them, not having the wisdom to understand that it may be misread by the audience as, as bad intentions by us. Right. 
So, so people they'd be assume. like, exactly. And so, the, you know, and part of it is also the guest is, is, is into mischief. Drag queens are, mm-hmm. by nature, uh, tricksters. They're shapeshifters, mm-hmm. right? Uh, Loki. And, you know, the Lokis in our societies are wanting to stir up trouble because that makes life exciting and interesting. Wow. Wow. Okay, so you have dealt with the brunt of that. You have been on the negative side of that yeah. many, many times in your career. How do you deal with that? How do you keep going? You know, sometimes you don't. Uh, sometimes it ends relationships. But I always say to people, uh, you know, you cannot be canceled unless you want to be canceled. Mm-hmm. And the way to get canceled is by, again, just like with your relationships, and your relationship to your audience is like a relationship to your spouse. Mm-hmm. It is when you stop wanting to communicate with them. Mm. And so I see all these, like, you know, you know, A-list celebrities being like, I got canceled for something I said on Twitter 10 years ago. And I'm like, but are you willing to have a conversation about it today? Right. Are you willing to listen? Right. Are you willing to change as a person, you know? Though I think you've seen, or maybe you, you know more than I, that it seems like some people in a culture... I guess what's called cancellation culture is that there's no room for progress or change or growth. And I don't understand that because I think we're here to learn. I think we're here to grow. And I don't think you can cancel people and still believe in prison reform. You know, it's like we've said. It's right. like if, if, if you believe that people who are punished in prison mm-hmm. can learn and grow and develop and be released and do better in the world, how can you believe that there's people in the world who are in entertainment who can't learn from their mistakes, who are given no room to grow or, well, or to fuck up or make a mistake? And there's point. a situation where someone, you know, like Bill Cosby or well, uh, but that, that, I think Harvey really Weinstein, different. who has a history of harming people. Andrew Cuomo, I think those are right. really extreme examples of yeah. men who have perpetually hurt people and often knowingly, intentionally hurt but people. But see, when they were confronted about it, they didn't say, I'm listening. Right. They denied that it ever took place. Right. And, you know, I'm not saying that, that their outcome would have been different, but I would like to see, as opposed, you know, I want to see the worst people in the world. Uh, and maybe that's naive of me, you know, and, and it's not my place to grant forgiveness. But I, I learned this from actually from uh, <laughs> Oprah. Uh-huh. And it was, um, t- not, it was a Tyler Perry says, forgiveness doesn't mean letting somebody off the hook. <laughs> it means you no longer have the power to hurt me yes. anymore. I love that. I speak about that. That's the toy that actually my, with me. My favorite documentary, Forgiving Dr. Mangalai, speaks to that. That's 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 a woman who survived the con- uh, who survived concentration Auschwitz, times. Um, and went to back to Auschwitz to forgive yeah. her Nazi captor who did this horrific experiments on her and her twin sister, basically killed her twin sister. Um, but she did a documentary about forgiving him, not because it lets him off the hook, but because it gave her the freedom to let go mm. um, of a certain energy she didn't want to hold on to. And I think that's a different approach to relationship and forgiveness that I think would be quite valuable in our society and culture. But it seems like maybe, again, from my point of view, it's we're often going in the opposite direction of saying, no, I don't like what you said. You did one thing wrong. Now you're canceled. Now you're excommunicated from my entire life and go, you know, sit in the corner or go to the pasture and die. Yeah. And I just don't think that lends itself to a society learning and growing and evolving and changing. But ultimately, you know, if you're doing everything right, people won't ever realize you've done anything at all. Look like Say that again. When you're doing everything right, people will never realize you've done anything I at all. I love that. That's so true. Like Ilo T. Farnsworth. Yeah. Who, do you know who that is? No, I have no idea. See? But do you know, do you guys know, without Googling it, who Ilo T. Farnsworth is? I have no idea who that the is. The man who invented television. Whoa. Okay. I created, my husband and I created this format yes. called podcasts. Yes. <laughs> when we started, there were Seriously. 50 shows. None of them sounded like anything that we know about podcasts today. And through the course of the 16 years of Feast of Fun's history, we've come up with a lot of clever ideas that have been outright stolen. Or, you know, um, there's a term called uh, cryptomnesia. When you love something so much, it becomes part of your own subconscious mind. And one thing that people love that I created that I've had a really complicated relationship is the lesbian pride flag. 
Say more. I've heard you talk it's about so that. It's yeah. so crazy yeah. and so ridiculous and beautiful. And it was created at a spur of a moment because we were reacting to a Time Magazine article about cougars. Uh-huh. And we're like, what about lipstick lesbians? And so we created a lipstick lesbian flag with shades of lipsticks and with a lipstick uh, kiss on the upper right hand corner, sort of rem- reminiscent of the bear pride flag. And lesbians on the internet took it and, and not only did they not give us credit, they claimed themselves like pixel for pixel. Mm. It's one thing if you redesign something and obviously it's not gonna match pixel wise, yeah. but the, this one woman um, took it and claimed it that was her design, even though it's clearly stolen from us. Wow. And and then um, this other uh, young woman in Australia, she redesigned it to to be the the very simple two stripes of uh, of warm red, a white stripe, and then a pink and purple stripe on the bottom. You know, Gosh. so what we know the lesbian pride flag to be today was very close to the trans pride flag in design. And to me, it was like, it was this cosmic game of telephone where we sent out a message Mm. into the universe and it actually stayed and changed the world. And that to me is like, I think of every podcast that I see, I think every show that exists out there is, is a cousin, it's a relative. And to me, it's like, I will be forgotten just like Ilo T. Farnsworth will be forgotten. Mm. Like many people. But the only thing we're able to leave behind is the love that we give to the world. Yes. And when you create great art, your name and your art may not be remembered, but the, the love will continue. Love that. Well, on that note, I think that's such a powerful message. And, you know, like you said, it's like when we create loving intent love and positive, positive it's intent. like we don't often generate... I'm just going to move my feet. Um, this, we is don't a time, this is a very deep conversation, <laughs> a very shallow <laughs> tub, I have to say. Yeah. So we don't always generate the kind of um, memory or attention, but nevertheless, your imprint is on digital media. You were the first... And in my opinion, I'm pretty sure the longest running podcast in in history. We well, um, and I, I know think that Guinness Book of World Records is a whole. Adam horrible. Curry was doing his show, um, and um, this week in tech, um, Leo Laporte also was doing his show um, at the same time we were doing ours. And are they doing it now? They still are doing theirs today. And uh, the funny thing is that... I've never heard of them. I heard a piece of fun. Leo Laporte uh, found uh, one of our t-shirt designs, the podcast that makes its own gravy. <clears throat> and he thought it was a reference to the Purina dog chow. But either way, it's like a sexual thing, right? But you're making your own gravy means you're going to... Oh. <laughs> and, and, um, and he used that as a, as a catchphrase for his podcast for like half a year. And so people pointed out, you know, that's a gay thing from a gay podcast. We had t-shirts for sale. Wow. Like that's... <laughs> wow. And so to me, it was like, wow. that's when I realized early on that like, you know, you're going to make a lot of interesting things and those things may have an impact, but people may not necessarily uh, reward you for it. They might not respect you for it. They might not love you. But you know, Fosco, but it doesn't matter but because what that, matters is the message. And so, if people are going to steal things from you, yeah, make great ideas worth stealing. And isn't that kind of what being a parent is about? I know, like you are a parent, mm-hmm. and you have inspired so many generations of gay men. You you hear this uh, from so many gay men who have grown right. up on the show that you are a loving parental energy. And sometimes yeah. the best parents in this world. Don't get thanked or acknowledged, but they know that it's like, okay, I made it the imprint. I help nurture and develop life and energy, and I help the world and I help the people struggling in the world be better people. And I, I wish think, that my can, mother do could you feel see like, that. Yeah. Do you feel like you can? I, I mean, do. I see that. In I see that. I understand that in a very okay. deep and way. Mark, yeah. And my and and the, my sweet beautiful mother and father. Yes. At, at their I love best, your mother. In, at their yes. best in their lives. Um, understood that and follow that, but you know there have been times in their lives that they didn't see that. Yeah. And it breaks my heart that today my mother was like saying to my sisters like, they're 
the family gene is going to die with, you know, because not because uh, we've all between me and my brothers and sisters, there's only been one child mm. and she's not likely to get married and have children soon. And my mother was very heartbroken by that. And I said, you know, if you if you want to have children, if you want your children to have children, you have to create an atmosphere for that to happen. And it's not easy. Yeah. You know, and, and it's and it, having children is a sacrifice. Yeah. Being a parental a figure means giving of yourself and not expecting anything in return. And yet you have been doing this for 16 yeah. years. And well, I, I get a lot in return. It's not a biological child, but you yeah. have been parental, mm-hmm. I mean, you, in a loving yeah. way, you yeah. have been a parent, a guardian, an influence on an entire generation of LGBTQ youth. Isn't that wonderful? It's, it's, but I hope that you know, as we approach yeah. 3,000 episodes of Feast of Fun, that you have had that. And I hope that with all the shit and the, the, backslide you have to deal with it that's something that gives you some it's sort minor. of peace or comfort it's really minor and, and and part of it is like i went to a friend's funeral one time um been going to a lot of funerals this past year like if you get if you go to 10 funerals you get a free ice cream oh i thought it was a pizza a yogurt man <laughs> but I was anyways, for the pizza i went to this funeral and they were like this person was like you're fausto fernos yeah and i said yes isn't it wonderful? Lovely. Isn't it divine? <laughs> yes. <Okay. laughs> and I thought that was so much. I, that's actually a line I stole from uh, Lauren Bacall. Love Someone that. said that to her, and I was like, that is so funny. Love that. So, yeah. before we finish our interview tonight. It's over. It's, it's over. I can't so believe fast. it. I saw the best things in life go fast. Don't let it Would you? end. Don't let it end. My baby. <laughs> Don't let it end this way. So if you could go back 20 years before you started the podcast and give Faustina one piece of advice, what would that be? Uh, keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple. Yes. Yep. Yep. Just well, that, don't, don't uh, you know, part of it is like, it's fun to throw everything in the kitchen sink uh-huh. into your bathtub, <laughs> um, as we sort of have done a little bit today. But sometimes the most simple ideas are the most powerful ones. Love it. Well, I want to thank yeah. you. I have learned from you. I have watched you. You have helped me in my career, my entire career. I have looked to you for guidance and wisdom and friendship. Mm. And I just thank you so much. I'm so honored you're in the bathtub. Oh, my God. I would never miss it for the this, world. That's incredible. You know, this I recommend just... everybody do it. He gives the best massages. Oh, yes. And they're free. Yes. Yes. Now that's get so back to my feet. All right, baby. Oh, oh, oh yes. So yes, yes. Oh. All right. So until the next time, watch the next episode of Tub Talks with Damon on YouTube. <laughs> and Tub Talks with Damon, thank you so much for tuning in. And tell more of the cons- uh, And watch Feast, Feast of, fun. of Fun. Listen to Feast of Fun. Yes. Available at all, uh, on Apple and all friendly apps. Feast Where of Fun. Fine Be a subscriber. Fun. Yes. And it's very little. I mean, if you just like. The cost of a cosmopolitan in New York City will get you 16 years of podcasts. No, hold on a second. Don't get it twisted. You can subscribe to Feast of Fun for free. Free. For free. But to get the good stuff. Just search on on Feast of Fun. Pay your money, hunty. Search wherever fine podcasts are found, Feast of Fun. And then if you want to go in deeper and access 3,000 legendary podcasts, then you go to feastoffun.com slash plus. You just have to pay a little bit to go into Fausto a little deeper. American Express will do you. nicely. It's thank worth you. It. <laughs> Let me loosen up your, your collar. collar. Tell me, you want me to pour champagne on myself again? <laughs> it's very good for your hair. Right, well, there we go. Oh, well, we don't want to, you know, here. Pour some. Have you ever had champagne poured on uh, your head? Well, I have now. Woo! What does that feel like? Well, it feels indulgent. It's very, yes. <laughs> Lavish, honey. It feels honey. like I'm in an, like, I'm, I'm christening oh. your your back like up series. A, like, splish splash. Um, splish splash tub talk. <laughs> honey, twenty twenty one. Here, just drink this, honey. Drink. <laughs>
Tamam.